Breitbart Media, you know, the home of Steve Bannon and alt-right conspiracy theories, yeah, they just dropped a new movie called My Son Hunter, a purported biopic that's a dramatization of the president's son, Hunter's, life, and the corruption that Republicans believe Joe Biden has played a role in. I can remember getting paid some money, but I can't remember what for. Well, my dad says we never discuss my businesses, period. Or my cut. What's happening in there? Joe's in on it. Party's over! The premiere of the film a couple weeks ago was uh, less than glamorous in a nondescript office building in LA. A group of around 70 people gathered for the premiere, including most notably the actor Dean Cain, who played Superman in Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. After the screening, the group played a trivia game, the prizes for which were a giant bong and some Parmesan cheese. And while it's not glamorous, it is another attempt by the alt-right to gain footing in the film industry because, just like in politics, good family values and Republican ideals are becoming victimized by Hollywood. And they're profiting off the cultural phenomenon amongst Republicans and right-wingers that is Hunter Biden. First, let's just get into Hunter's backstory because honestly, some of it is jaw dropping, like literally my jaw dropped. And honestly, I understand why some people are a bit skeptical of him. Yeah, I said it. Like I said in my alt-right TikTok video, we're all skeptical about the same people. We just go about it in very different ways. Rich people run our country and the shit that they get away with is wild. And Biden and his family are no exceptions. So Robert Hunter Biden was born on February 4th, 1970 in Aquarius, fishy. He's the middle child of Joe Biden's three children with his wife, Nelia. In 1972, when Hunter was just two years old, tragedy struck when Nelia and the three children were in a car crash that killed Hunter's mother, Nelia, and his little sister, Naomi. Hunter and Bo were also severely injured with Bo suffering severe traumatic brain injuries and a fractured skull. Joe Biden was sworn into office from Bo's hospital room as one of the youngest people to ever be elected to the Senate. Hunter went to Georgetown for undergrad and then graduated from Yale Law School in 1996. He became a consultant and later vice president at a bank holding company called MBNA. And from the beginning, his career raised conflict of interest questions because MBNA was a massive donor to Joe Biden's campaigns for years. Later in the 90s, Hunter was appointed to the Department of Commerce by Bill Clinton. So he's moving his way into the DC ranks. And then in 2001, he founded Old Acker Biden and Belair LLP, a lobbying firm. During that time, he also purchased an international hedge fund. Then in 2008, Obama asked Biden to be his running mate. So Hunter stepped down from his lobbying company to help the optics of his father's presidential campaign. Then he launched business consulting companies, various investment funds, other investment and advisory firms. I truly don't understand how people get into consulting or what that means or why there are so many consulting firms that make so much money. Why? And also, how come? Anyway, these fancy businesses led to Hunter making business relationships with various figures, especially in China and Russia. But before we go there, I wanna thank my partner on today's video, Helix. I love to sleep. I prioritize sleep above, I think, literally everything else. If I don't get a full eight hours, I am a monster and I love my bed. Having a good bed, as you probably know, is important to getting good sleep. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. Helix made a sleep quiz that you can take to match your unique body and sleep preferences because everyone's different and needs different things out of their mattress. And Helix Sleep has something for everyone's unique taste. And if you share your bed with a partner, you can even take the quiz together to find a good compromise for both of you. Based on my results, Helix matched me with their Midnight Mattress, which I obviously upgraded to a Lux because I only deserve the best, frankly. I'm a side sleeper, I do the running man position, you know, trying to run away in my sleep. And I love a middle of the road firmness, very Goldilocks, not too soft, not too firm. And then you can personalize the mattress even more by adding the Glacio Tex cooling cover, which helps keep the bed cool and comfortable, which has been absolutely essential during the hot summer months. I've had my Helix mattress for about four months now and it's really comfortable and I get great sleep on it. And it was so easy to have just shipped right to my door. The shipping is free and it comes rolled up in this box that's super easy to set up. An absolute 
all around win. With your Helix Sleep Mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty. And there are financing options and flexible payment plans available as well. So if you're nervous to buy a mattress that you haven't had a chance to try out, you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. And if you don't, they'll literally come to your home and pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. I love my Helix and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix, click on the link in the description or go to helixsleep.com slash Lija for $200 off your Helix Sleep Mattress plus two free pillows and they are some uh, pretty great pillows too. Thanks, Helix. Okay, so Hunter Biden is growing his business empire, doing lobbying and consulting work on an international scale, fraternizing with all sorts of powerful people in places like Russia, Ukraine, and China. Then apparently, randomly in 2012, at the age of 44, he enlisted in the Navy Reserves, but then was discharged two years later because he tested positive for cocaine. And then Bo, his brother, and Joe Biden's other son, tragically dies from cancer in 2015. And then like a year later, Hunter divorced divorces his wife and the mother of his three children and then starts dating Bo's widow. Yeah, their relationship was very private and then all of a sudden he breaks up with Bo's widow and Hunter is now having a secret wedding with South African model Melissa Cohen. But then reports broke of a woman claiming that Hunter had fathered a child with her while he was dating Bo's widow which Hunter denied, but later DNA results confirmed. Hunter Biden is messy, y'all. And while this is all unfolding very publicly, back in 2014, Hunter signs on as a board member of Burisma Holdings, which happens to be Ukraine's largest gas production company. He was working on the board's anti-corruption efforts. And in doing so, he recommended the law firm Boys Schiller Flexner, where he just happened to also work. He was listed as counsel, which if you don't know, in large law firms, there are lawyers that can be listed as counsel or of counsel, where some Sometimes they only work sporadically or it looks good for the firm to have them on their roster so they pay them and let them practice out of the firm but they're not a partner it's just kind of almost like an honorary position and this happened right at the same time in 2014 where there was tension between the US and Russia over Ukraine Crimea ever heard of it and there were issues with Ukrainian energy dependence as well so people were saying that this is a blatant conflict of interest which the Biden administration dismissed saying that Hunter is a private citizen so his business interests just don't reflect the views of the government and then five years later, this came up again. If it sounds familiar, you're right. The New York Times publishes this bombshell story detailing Joe and Hunter's ties to Ukraine, saying that Joe Biden has successfully removed a Ukrainian prosecutor from office because he was investigating Burisma Holdings, where Hunter sat on the board. Big if true big if true, which raises questions about whether Joe was trying to shield Hunter from an investigation into his company. You see, Burisma Holdings founder faced multiple investigations of tax invasion and money laundering. Doesn't look good, Hunter. Doesn't look good, okay? Later, Ukraine's prosecutor general said that they had no evidence of wrongdoing against either Joe or Hunter, but this was revived again during Trump's impeachment the first time, his first impeachment. It said that Trump brought this back into the limelight again to try to draw attention away from the communications that Rudy Giuliani had made with Ukraine, which raised concerns that Trump actively collaborated with a foreign power to gain political leverage. Basically, the story was that Trump pressured Ukrainian officials to investigate Joe Biden in order for Trump to gain politically in the 2020 election. And yes, Trump was impeached over this. He just was not removed from office. So that's kind of the start of the Republican obsession with Hunter Biden. He has a messy personal life and potentially even a messier business life because of his dealings with Russia, Ukraine, and also China, which of course Republicans hate. And it was in the middle of that impeachment hearing when that DNA test confirmed that Hunter Biden had fathered a baby while he was dating his brother's widow. Like the optics are bad. Okay, so that's the lead up to the laptop, the ultimate Hunter Biden controversy. Hunter Biden's laptop, dibs on that band name, ah, uh, the laptop. Hunter Biden's laptop originally became a story because of the controversial quote unquote October surprise that came out just before the 2020 election. Basically what happened is that Hunter Biden spilled some water on his laptop, brought it to a computer store to be repaired, and then never came back to get it. The owner of the computer store was a man named John Paul Mac Isaac, who happened to be an enthusiastic Trump supporter. He is legally blind, so he was not able to confirm for sure who dropped off the laptop, but the person identified himself as Hunter Biden and signed a receipt with what appears to be Hunter Biden's name, and then never came back 
to pick up the laptop. So this guy, John, starts just sifting through what's on the laptop and he saw what he thought was pretty scandalous material. So he called the authorities and handed the laptop over, but he also kept a copy of it on a hard drive, which at some point he gave to Rudy Giuliani's lawyer, Robert Costello, and they gave it to the New York Post as well as to other Trump supporters like Steve Bannon. There are allegations that the files were never verified to actually be Hunter Biden's until recently mainstream media has generally treated the emails with caution, saying they're not verified, until a report by the New York Times dropped in March of this year, which stated that the New York Times had authenticated certain emails but not everything. Allegedly, the files contained embarrassing details about Hunter's drug addiction, as well as sexual materials, plus files and emails regarding Hunter's foreign work, most notably with that Ukrainian gas company, Burisma, as well as his Chinese business interests. Specifically, there are two quote unquote smoking gun emails that Republicans point to to claim that Joe Biden is corrupt and was involved in Hunter Biden's business dealings. First was an email where an executive at the Ukrainian gas company Burisma thanked Hunter for the quote, opportunity to meet your father, unquote, in 2015. So this looks kind of bad. Hunter was making connections with a Ukrainian gas company with his father as part of his business dealings. It also plays into the Trump supporter theory that Biden had this prosecutor fired to benefit Burisma. Turns out it was a single dinner that Hunter organized where there were like a dozen people in attendance. So the meeting was one dinner, allegedly. The second quote unquote smoking gun was a business venture that Hunter tried to set up with a Chinese energy tycoon in 2017. The email indicated that 10% would go to H for the big guy. The big guy was later confirmed to be Joe Biden, making it look like Hunter was setting up some sort of business in China where Joe Biden would have a 10% stake. But later emails on Hunter Biden's laptop show that Joe Biden was the one who made the next call that he was not interested in moving forward with this. So it shows Joe Biden refusing a deal that Hunter tried to involve him with. So as far as what has been verified in the documents, yeah, there's a lot of embarrassing information and information about pretty shady foreign business interests that Hunter is involved with, but nothing has been found that definitively shows that Joe Biden has engaged in controversial or even illegal behavior. Again, this came out in 2019, so it was bombshell information for the 2020 election. And then the controversy was further stoked by the response from social media platforms who were spooked after the 2016 election was shown to have been impacted by Russian activities on social media networks. So social media companies were concerned with the authenticity and were concerned that it might have been planted by Russia. So Twitter and Facebook both blocked links and took down posts regarding Hunter Biden's laptop because the material could have been hacked or faked, and it might have been misinformation, which of course then gave fodder to Trump supporters to say that social media was in favor of Biden being elected and they were affecting the election against Trump. Evidence has not emerged at this point to back up any claims that this laptop was part of a Russian plot. So conservatives think there's smoking gun emails. The mainstream news has looked things over, has verified some of the emails, but as of yet hasn't found that there was much of a story there because there's nothing that definitively shows that Joe Biden did anything controversial. Hunter Biden, on the other hand, remains a controversial figure and is in fact currently under investigation with an indictment of Hunter Biden, a very real possibility. This this investigation is happening in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware. Witnesses have been testifying to a grand jury, and the focus appears to be whether Hunter violated tax laws or committed money laundering or acted as an unregistered foreign lobbyist. He reportedly was paid millions over five years to sit on the board of that Ukrainian gas company. Hunter bought a sports car with $142,000 that was paid to him by a company controlled by a Kazakh oligarch. A Chinese energy company spent $4.8 million to entities that Hunter and his uncle James controlled. That company's founder also gave Hunter a large diamond. And while receiving gifts from foreign people, if you're a private citizen, is not illegal, you do have to pay taxes on those gifts. And there is an inquiry into whether Hunter properly paid his taxes, going back as far as the Obama administration. But the inquiry has expanded beyond just not paying taxes into a criminal investigation investigation about money laundering, meaning it's not that he was being negligent with paying taxes, he was engaging in criminal activity. 
That's what they're investigating. Apparently, various financial institutions filed suspicious activity reports to the U.S. government about movements of funds in and out of Hunter's accounts. And this money laundering can be in connection with acting as a foreign agent while you're unregistered. So it's not necessarily like drug trafficking or something particularly nefarious like that. It can be something as basic as just not being properly registered. You see, the Foreign Agents Registration Act requires anyone doing lobbying work for foreign clients to register with the government as a foreign agent. So the main question here is what kind of work Hunter was really doing for these companies? Was it business work or was it political? Because apparently even the feds don't know what the hell happens in consulting firms. So the fact that he brought his clients into contact with Biden at dinners could make him Hunter liable for potential crimes. But Republicans and Trump supporters are obsessed with Hunter, his life, and his laptop, not because of Hunter himself, but because of what they think it says about Joe Biden. Because the main story of Hunter Biden's life seems to be the fact that he's spent all of it in the shadow of his father. And this has a bigger picture impact as well because of the controversy over how social media companies handled the Hunter Biden laptop reports. How should social media companies respond when there's potential for a huge damning story to affect the outcome of a political race, and it's unclear the authenticity of that story. It's part of the larger conversation around misinformation and social media's role in that. Additionally, there's the issue of Hillary Clinton's emails, for which she was investigated and no wrongdoing was found. It's all further proof for Trump supporters and Republicans that mainstream media, social media, the government, and everyone operating within it except Donald Trump, apparently, is corrupt. And there appears to be a push to reignite probes into the Hunter Biden laptop, Hunter's behavior, and how much involvement Joe Biden has had in all of it if Republicans take the House or Senate during this midterm election. And it will continue to be an issue that will likely be in the spotlight as Joe Biden will likely run for re-election in 2024. As for the Breitbart-produced movie, My Son Hunter, I will be telling my friends about it so that we can add it to our bad movie night watch list, along with classic titles like Velocipaster and The Microwave Massacre. Thanks again to my partner on today's video, Helix. Reminder to go to Helix helixsleep.com slash Lija for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress plus two free pillows. Thanks, Helix. If you enjoyed this and want to support my work bringing you videos like this, please consider becoming a member of this channel or joining me over on Patreon, where we have a lively Discord chat, Lija's book club, behind the scenes stuff, and so much more. Thank you especially to newest Patreon supporters, Lisa and Molly Gore. And as always, thank you to my royal patrons, Old Man Pence, Fork McSpoon, Ellen L, and Daniel Taylor. And a very special thank you to my multi-platinum patrons, Brett Piantek and Cyrus Solka. Your generosity is greatly appreciated and it makes this channel what it is. So thank you. If you like this video, you'll probably like my last video where I talk about why politicians on Capitol Hill are allowed to play the stock market. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.